She has always uh, seen the world and the problems in which she has dealt with from a very different perspective. And by coming at that issue from a different perspective, she has literally changed an entire industry. There are few people who have had an impact on their field of study as much as Dr. Temple Grandin. At a university, we are about looking at problems in new and different ways and about the development of the minds that entrust themselves to training at our institutions. I would suggest to you that Dr. Temple Grandin's greatest contribution is not that she has looked at her problems through a different lens or the problems she has chosen to study through a different lens. She has taught all of us to look at and see the value of different perspectives and different kinds of minds. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome a true Colorado State University treasurer and my colleague, Dr. Temple Grandin. What I wanna do is to get you thinking about different ways that different people think. Now, some of the common conflicts we get in the world, in the, out in the world, is the different kinds of minds fighting each other. And one of the reasons they fight each other is they don't realize they think differently. Well, the techies always hate the suits. But then when the tech startups get big, they gotta hire a suit, otherwise they can't keep anything organized. <laughs> you see, that's an example of different kinds of minds. And these different minds complement each other. Take the iPhone, for example. Steve Jobs was an artist. And then the engineers have to make the inside of the phone work. You see, that's different kinds of minds working together. I'm a photorealistic visual thinker, uh, what's called an object visualizer. Now, what are some characteristics of visual thinking? First of all, it's bottom-up thinking. When you think in words, you tend to be a top-down thinker. You tend to overgeneralize. Bottom-up thinkers form their concepts by taking specific examples and putting them in categories. Also, my thinking's sensory-based, not word-based. So people ask me, well, how does that help me with animals? An animal doesn't think in words. It's sensory, smell, touch, what it sees, what it hears. My very first work I ever did with cat was to get down in shoots and see what they were seeing. And when I first did this, people thought it was really kind of crazy. Being a weird geek was difficult. And I'd, I'd whip out my drawings, and they'd go, ooh, you did that? When I was in high school, I got bullied and teased. And the only places I was not bullied and teased was getting into specialized interest things. What I'm saying is so a lot of kids today are getting labels. Because unfortunately in our system, to get any kind of um, service, you have to have a label. And I'm worried that our educational system is screening out some of our brilliant kids. I'm really, really concerned about that. You know, we've got to get out of the silos. I'm seeing kids on the autism spectrum kind of getting in that silo. You know, then you've got people in Silicon Valley, oh, we avoid all the labels. Um, farming people are in their silo. Um, we've got to get communicating across the silos. <laughs>